This is Kemper. This is Kemper. This is Kemper. Test one. And it is one minute before nine. We are getting ready to get this underway. Precisely no one is in the channel, which means that I will be focused primarily on saving this video to play it back for later. Uh, for those of you who aren't watching this video, good job, guys. Uh, this will be a basic training session. I will be playing myself in a quick head-to-head -head match. We will be going over the basic maneuvers of the game, the basic concepts of the game. And uh, maybe we'll end it early if uh, nobody ever shows up. It's because there won't be any questions to answer. Uh, I'm going to be doing an exhibition match. Oops, no, this is a multiplayer, a hot seat match. Uh, again, we will be doing the classic mode, just so you guys are practicing the correct thing. Uh, we will take the... Oh, actually, uh, an orc team is probably a good thing to bring. We will bring a relatively low value uh, 1300 Da Sievert Eds orc team and we will bring a good old fashioned squishy wood elf team the green glades also a value 1300 um, most team values for the league will start at an even 1000 that is absolutely expected uh, these are some slightly ad advent advantage teams. Um, you'll note that we have a few level 3, level 2, level 3 characters. Um, they have some additional skills beyond what they start with. Uh, both teams have a few of these. Um, specifically, Aznok the Thrower has Leader, which allows the team to get an extra reroll when he is on the field, and Kickoff Return, which means he can move up to three squares after the ball has been scattered. Um, to get underneath the ball. The Green Glades, the Wood Elves, have a level 3, uh, also have a leader and sure hand, allows you to pick up the ball easier. A level 4 War Dancer with Strip Ball, Fend, and Dauntless. 
Uh, strip ball allows you, obviously, to pick up the ball. Fend keeps players away, and Dauntless means he can hit bigger guys. Uh, no one is in the channel still, so I'm just going to hit launch game, and we will walk through the basic setups. Uh, neither team will be transferring any gold. We will not be doing any inducements. We will start match. We'll talk about uh, petty cash and inducements in a later video. The loading screen does at times take a while. Happens. Classic intro video. I wonder which team is which. Uh, part of the uh, game, obviously, is uh, a traditional coin flip. Pick uh, who will be kicking and who will be receiving first off. Uh, as Seaford Heads get to call it, they call heads. The Green Glades get the choice of either kicking or receiving. They will kick because they hate themselves. Um, often you'll choose to receive, but obviously at halftime you switch. The first key aspects of the online uh, Blood Bowl setup is that there is a timer here on the left. Um, you get two minutes for setup, uh, four minutes for each turn. Uh, that timer just ticks down. There isn't much else you can do. You'll see that it is pouring rain, which means it is harder to pick up the ball and catch the ball and do anything with the ball. That's probably advantageous for the orcs in this case. Uh, I'm going to start doing some basic setups. Rules for setup, you must have three players on the line of scrimmage. Um, that is uh, up on the line, but uh, between these two hash marks on the outside. Uh, you must have three players there. Any additional players will be, uh, don't have to be on the line. A common tactic is to not put players on the line, because if they are on the line, your opponent who is receiving the ball who gets to go first will just spend the first turn beating the Jesus out of them. Anyway, so I will go with an aggressive front lineup for the, uh, the elves here. They are going to see what it takes if they can get in early and maybe cause uh, a good turnover and maybe push, push the orcs back and get the, an, early, an early pickup. So, uh, one interesting thing is the kicking team must set up first. The, uh, which means the receiving team, who also gets to go first, get to pick the placement of their players, uh, knowing what their opponent has done. So we'll accept. We'll switch sides to the orcs. The orcs have uh, something that we'll discuss real quickly here. They have black orcs stats down here. This is movement, strength, agility, and armor. Strength 4 means they basically are counted as two standard one of them, which is strength 3 players. Uh, they also have strength 3 linemen. They have a goblin who is strength 2, but uh, is harder to hit. Uh, there's their throwers. They will actually set up in a center Block is very handy in one of the potential results of when you hit someone is that they uh, have the ability to uh, both players go down. And uh, when you do that, with a player who has block, 
that your player does not go down. Note that it works the other way as well. So a player who has block who gets hit with a both down result, that player will stay out. Now this is, without doubt, overly aggressive. Five, six. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drop some of these green players back a little bit. And, uh, well, no, no, move them up. And this is going to basically dare the elves to try to get their woods past me. Uh, it is now the elven turn. You'll see that a war dancer, uh, Athelion, will be kicking the ball. Uh, this is a right click, so when you are kicking, you right click where you want it to go. If your kicker does not have the kick skill, oh, Arco's in the channel. Hello, Arco, how are you? Uh, then it will scatter up to six squares in any direction. So a common tactic is to not aim too near to the lines because you never know where it's going to go. Uh, the orcs have the ability to... Quick snap! So every time you kick the ball, uh, an event happens. Sometimes it's... Uh... No worries, Arco, you're the only one here so far. There's a bit of a delay also. Uh, an event happens. When an event happens, you get a chance to react. In this case, uh, the offense start their drive a fraction earlier. So as the orcs, I love this. Because this means every single one of my players gets to move. And I can tackle zones, tackle zones to all the squares immediately adjacent to each player. And usually you would have to touch through these zones. Meaning you actually have to uh, you have to very carefully maneuver your players so that they did get hit. Past their opponents, uh, and instead you would, uh, with this particular event, you get free movement, but only pretty few points. So what I've done is I've now marked up basically the entire element front line, which gives me a great chance to cause some casualties. Uh, casualties do happen; they can range from stunned, i.e., just take can for the next turn, to knocked out, to uh, severely dislocated limbs, broken jaws, uh, and even to death uh, when one happened to uh, Before I hit accept end of event, since I have three minutes, we'll go through something real fast. Uh, Alright, good to know, Arco. Uh, down here in the bottom left, you'll see uh, events uh, as they happen. Uh, these are things like, uh, here's the movement, here's checking the players on the pitch, Here's kickoff return, here's the kickoff table. Um, it will also show you what the die roll results are. Um, so when I click end of event, you'll see something appear down here as the ball lands. If uh, as knock, the thrower is able to catch the ball as it hits him. So you'll note that he needed a four plus. He rolled a two, plus zero, the ball is bouncing. Minus one, pouring rain, equals one, so it's a failure. So he did not catch the ball and it then bounced loose. So that's obviously not something the orcs are great at, is catching the ball. So every time you fail to pick up the ball, every time you drop the ball, every time a player of yours is knocked down on your turn, your turn immediately ends. So one of the key things to remember in Blood Bowl is order of operations. So I'm actually gonna move this goblin to in front of the ball because it helps the, the thrower pick up the ball. It's a 4 plus. It would be, in fact, a 5 plus without the goblin there. And the goblin adds a plus 1, basically. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the most advantageous that are called blocks. This is when you start hitting people. So, 2 die, 2 die, 2 die. That means I have at least one more strength co combined than the defensive player. Uh, in this case, the elven line would have a strength 3, the black orcs on their own have strength 4, and each other orc around them adds 1. Now notably, this strength 3 versus that strength 3... Uh, he has guard. He doesn't. Good. Here's 1. Strength 3 versus strength 3 is 1. And you'd say, that guy has... He's, he's there. He's helping. Well, he's also marked. When this... 
Uh, not easily, Arco. I will admit that it does not easily allow me to raise my voice volume. Good to know. Hold on one moment. So, no, but I will do that for future ones. Um, can you hear me okay, or is this, uh, is it challenging? Anyway, so a one die block means there's one die. Whatever the result is, is what the result is. So I'm going to start with the most advantageous blocks, where I can cause the most damage and the most havoc. So I roll two die. <sighs> that red die result, the red skull, means the attacker falls down. So I'm actually going to burn a reaper, which is tough. Uh, so this is push. I can push a player back, and this is both down. Both players fall down. Since my player doesn't have block in this case, I don't want him to fall down. We'll push him, and then we'll follow him up. Uh, we'll now, continue on with our two die results. Uh, the yellow, re the yellow die result knocks the defender down. And now we can two die result on him. So since I have block, and I want to knock players down, I'm going to select both down. And you'll notice that since both players have block, everybody stays on their feet. Uh, it's block, it's block, so we can target that one. Now, everybody stays on their feet. Let's try to knock that guy down. And since I've already used a reroll this turn, my player falls down and the orc turn ends. Ah, uh, welcome aboard SSLG. So now we are on an elven turn. The elves are, as you can probably guess, not experts at uh, direct face-to-face -face combat. Their specialty is, in fact, the exact opposite. Uh, so one of the key things that elves want to do is get away from tormenting orcs. So something I can do here, since I have dodge and agility 4, I can actually back off. Now, before I hit go, you'll note that that's three right clicks to set my path. That red one means a die roll will happen, a dodge roll. So if I come back here, this is pre-setting my maneuver, uh, and then I right click again on the square to execute. And you'll see that he needed a three plus, he rolled a two plus one for dodge, it's a three, he has successfully gotten away. Now, I don't really want to encourage the orcs to come downfield too fast, but I don't want to give them too many targets. So we're going to start setting up, uh, we'll call it a line of engagement. And you'll note that I'm taking moves early, so I don't have to take them again later. The moves that don't require any die rolls are things you should always do first. Alright, so I'm going to take this ward answer, who has block, and that we're actually going to try to blitz and create a hole in the line of the orcs. Now, push is not exactly what I wanted, but it does let me move someone back, at least to there. And I probably shouldn't have followed up, but that's alright. So, having done that and realizing that strategy to get through this turn is probably going to fail, I'm going to focus on getting the players that I can out of harm's way. So again, we're going to just try to create some separation. There's the defender down that I really want to uh, see. Whenever you're attacking, this is your best option. So defender down, I'm going to elect to push him away and into the corner. And I'm not going to follow him up. Because this way, my thrower is safe next turn. Nobody can hit him immediately. Uh, you only get one blitz action, which is where you run forward and then hit a player. Uh, otherwise, all you get is movement and block. And for block, you must be standing next to the player to start with. You also see that the elves have a couple of players down. Uh, if I stood them up, the orcs would get free reign to hit them. You can hit a player when he is on the ground. However, doing so uh, it might invoke the wrath of the referee, uh, at which point you then have an opportunity to get thrown out. You get one foul action per turn. So I'm going to try a uh, double dodge, uh, mighty blow, and block. So what we're going to try to do 
as we're going to take this lineman here, and you'll see that there are two die rolls. One to get from one tackle zone, but he's still in a tackle zone. One to get out. Let's see if he gets away. He does. The elves are very good at this run away, run away business. So what we're going to do is we're going to go put him next to the ball to make it tougher for the orcs to pick it up. Uh, this is a classic uh, agility team. That's elves, that's skaven, that's a variety of other folks. Uh, make it hard for the slower teams to pick up the ball. We'll, fall, we'll stand up and we'll try to run away. Success. And we will actually leave him here because that's a lot of die rolls to get out of the way. And as he is, he's kind of blocked in the middle of the field. Uh, you'll see I've got a flashing warning here that I'm about to run out of time. So we're going to... Yeah, we'll fall back a little bit here because this is a training match. And we will say that the turn is over. Now the orcs always want to be in contact with the enemy. So they will always stand up and close wherever possible just because it's something they like to do. Uh, in an effort to make life harder for elves, those are the sneaky bastards to get through my lines, I'm actually trying to close these gaps so that uh, an elf can run straight through. You'll see the two lines squares right here. An elf can run through without having to dodge their way through. Uh, right now, actually, this is a pretty good line of confrontation for the orcs, but the ball is unfortunately loose in the backfield, which is uh, with bad news. So, we're going to blitz. We will uh, try to get this elf off of the line. We successfully do that. He's at least away. And now we will try to pick up the ball. Success. That is what we like to see as an orc. And we'll move forward. Now, that's not a lot moving forward. It's a, it's a small movement. Uh, but this does also open up a whole new tactical possibility. It's now time to create what uh, strength teams call the cage. And you'll note that I'm bringing players back to defend my ball carrier. So by doing this, there it is. There is a successful cage. So admittedly, the goblin is weak, but a no player can get to the ball carrier without having to dodge through tackle zones. Because of this, that means that uh, the ball carrier is at least relatively safe from getting blitzed the next turn, at the very least. Uh, and more importantly, it means a, an opponent is probably going to have to waste a blitz on one of these corner players to open up a lane, which means I'll get a turn and a chance to push back before they can cause some serious damage. Having now set up this, this setup, the, the, my cage, I will move my black horse forward to Engage those sneaky elf bastards. And again, you'll note that I'm trying to make sure that there's no more than two, two squares between any of my players. Although I did leave uh, this lane down the outside for elves to come down. Uh, the last thing I have, last player who hasn't moved, is this uh, Blitzer, who has a one die walk. That's relatively chancy, so I've left it to the last. Down because everyone has a block. Uh, I could try to use the goblin to hit this lightning, but also a one die block. Success. Push him there, and I'm not going to follow that because I want to uh, keep that cage intact. You'll note that it automatically starts the next player's turn. There's no acceptance period, it's just the next turn has started. So, as an elf, uh, I see that I have an opposing cage set up. I see I have a potential way in here at the back. But uh, really, orcs are slow. Uh, let's slow them up even more. So, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to run a relatively weak catcher in front of it. Set another lineman in front of here. And you'll note that I've left a square of space. That square is really designed. Uh, and at the same time, they can't perform very far. So stand that player up. Again, the, the non dialogue options are really something you want to start off. Uh, this board answer doesn't have a really clear path. So. I'm 
actually going to do something that is a little bit gutsy. So we're going to talk about how to create a two die versus a one die block situation. So I'm going to blitz in and I want to get this goblin. So if I go here and then hit the goblin, you'll see that it's giving me a one die option. I only have an opportunity to hit, hit him with one die. However, if I start over and I go here first and then hit the goblin, it's a two die op opportunity because I'm not getting bl uh, and there's no assist coming in from this black orc here. Alternatively, I can in fact go all the way out and around and hit him from the back. Now, while that doesn't change the number of die necessarily, what it does change is where this goblin will go when impact is made. So by doing this, there are three potential, for coming from the side, there are three potential squares. There are always three squares where the goblin could go. One, two, three. Basically form a triangle with the pointy end where the impact is coming from. So if I were to come at him from an angle here, it would be one, two, three. A player can only, uh, cannot fill a space that is filled by another player unless there are no other options. So if there was a, uh, an orc here and an orc here, then it would be free. But as it is, if I come from the side, you'll note that this isn't an option, but either of those are. I like that option because it gets the goblin further away from everything and means that the, uh, the thrower is marked up. And the die are kind. We'll knock the goblin down and send it to the air. Now I didn't immediately follow it up because I'm not entirely certain that I don't want to be here. I could move here and double mark. I could move here and get double marked. And actually I probably do want to be right here. So now that I've caused that blitz, I've marked up the thrower. We're good with that. I have a minute left, so let's try to do something stupid. We will try to sneak this war dancer. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to move this war dancer around like that, which will allow me to have a two die block there. And that has gone horrifically wrong. We're going to try to re roll. So you'll note that I've pushed the orc to the outside. Uh, one extra thing that you can do in this game is you can push the characters off the field and into the stands, at which point the crowd gets a free roll to cause an injury against the player that got pushed into the crowd. So I've now created a lane, and we have another player in the orc backfield. Uh, we try to run away. Try to run away, and we try to run away. Success! Seven seconds left, we'll end the turn. Now the orcs are in what we are going to call a very bad spot right now. The, the, their current uh, cage has been broken. The ball, the, uh, ball handler is currently marked up, and they don't have an opportunity to hit anyone at all at this turn. Options here, really, as a as a power player, a smashy player, sometimes it's true. You can try to mark up everybody and just challenge the opposing team to hit you one v one, or you can try to get sneaky and change your cage. So I'm going to show what a possible sneaky option might be: changing the cage. player off, because without getting hit away, moving everybody else is just going to expose my ball hand. And before I do that, as I think about it, maybe I should go finish up marking up the players that I want to get rid of. So we're actually going to mark up these elves from behind. And you'll know that I decide to mark both these elves with one guy, because it allows me to mark both these elves up with the same guy. This allows me because my black ones are stronger and strength. Against three players, they can handle two v one situations a lot better. Do something silly. I'm going to stand that one up. I'm going to go with this player as much as we can. And I'm going to play twice. Make it really hard for me to stop. So now that I've done all of those free moves. And 
flatten the puny elf scum. Ooh. And you'll see here, an injury. It's an armor value of 8 plus. We have 2 plus 5 plus 1. He has a mighty blow scale. 8 is a success. We've got through his armor. We've caused an injury. So now we will the injury table. And the result of stunned means next turn, he can't get up. He will just roll over and line on the ground in pain. Which is, in fact, exactly where I would put that puny elf to be. here against the sideline. So you'll note that I'm actually now running players forward. That's actually not what I wanted to do. This is why you have to pay attention to what you're doing. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm trying to figure out. And he failed. So I had set my path, clicked off so it switched, and then clicked again which brought up the default pathing. By doing that, I gave the computer an opportunity to create a new path, which has created, well, chaos. Now, I've marked everybody up, but the ball carrier didn't move. Halftime is at turn eight, so I don't have that much longer. I'm almost halfway through the first half, uh, which is going to be a problem. So as the elves now, I see that I've got an opportunity, maybe here, to start knocking down this black orc. Uh, I've got some marking problems here. I've got a beat-up character down there who can't move. Uh, ooh. And I have uh, this blitzer who's kind of off on his own. So we'll move over here to create this markup situation. We'll create another double marking situation over here. Actually, this is triple marking. And then the first thing I'm going to do, because it's going to give me an opportunity to even the playing field, by even the playing field, I mean give me a man up over the orcs. Is I'm going to hit this player who's on the sideline from directly inside. If I use the ward answer, there's a square that he could move to right there. So he would just be pushed down the line. By taking this thrower from it directly inside, I can hit him. So not only am I going to knock him down, I'm going to say, no, I don't want to follow him up. Now, he's been knocked unconscious. Player, so the orc player has what's called an apothecary. An apothecary can change an injury result if he wants. Uh, since he's just knocked unconscious, uh, I'm going to save the apothecary. You only get to use him once per game. I'm not going to use the apothecary on knocked unconscious. So, and then you'll see the crowd comes running in and stomps on him a fair bit. So he's been KO'd. And if I scroll to the orc bench, there he is. He's now, uh, where is he? Did I go the wrong way? Yep, there he is. He's now unconscious on the sidelines. And that also means that the uh, orcs are down a man for the rest of this drive. So he can't come back on the field or even be replaced by this player on the sidelines until the end of the drive, uh, which means somebody scores or half time. Alright, so we'll start to create some mismatches here if we can. And let's see if we can knock some of these black orcs down. So since I have a 3 to 1 off advantage here, I can get a 2 die block against the Black Orc. We're not going to follow him up, but we've knocked it down. We'll do the same thing here, except we're going to push him into the middle where he has no support. So I failed to actually knock him down there. But by following him up, I actually pushed him next to another Elven player. This Elven player gets his own opportunity to have a swing at the Black Orc. Now we've successfully knocked him down, and he's down on the ground. Now, as an elf player here, I don't quite have what I want to have, which is a free run at that player with the ball. But I've got some players down. I'm going to start creating some marking opportunities here, and I'm going to try to get this catcher out of danger. Success. And in fact, I'm going to get ad I'm going to get gutsy. And I'm not even going to get the catcher in there. The catcher only has strength two. I don't want him to risk getting injured. But by leaving him, oops, let's actually get him away from the goblin who's about to stand up. By leaving him here, the catcher is in a great position. If the ball gets turned over, 
I get to throw it up to the catcher, and the catcher can score before the orcs have a, ton a chance to, uh, to do anything bad. Alright, so, that last turn did go right for the orcs. Let's see if we can create a little bit of a lane uh, again. First things first. Everybody who needs to stand up, stand up. So we're going to stand the goblin up and we're going to mark the catcher. But we're not going to do it right next to him because there's that elf there. Get this guy coming in off the back. The black orc will step up right in front. This black orc will step up to mark. I've decided that I need to get the ball moving. So, because I have this lane down the outside, I'm going to take it. And while I've deliberately moved into a situation where I'm getting marked up, I'm confident, through the power of good die rolling, that I'm going to keep him free. So we'll take a two die block here. Now, you saw the, you saw the dodge word up here. Dodge means the player has the dodge skill. So whenever you see that player knocked down but with an exclamation point on the uh, the POW sign, that means the player, if they have the dodge skill, will in fact stay on their feet, which is frustrating. But we can still not get on this player. So there's defender stumbles, defender down. Anyone with a dodge will stay up. So we always take defender down if that's an option. Push him away and inside. Follow him up, and you'll see he's stunned. The big ring of stars means he's down for at least a turn. Now we're starting to recreate this modified cage over here on the sideline. And we'll be safe. We're going to protect that ball as much as possible. And then we have a one-die block against a war dancer. Well, that didn't go well. Now I could use a reroll. But we're only halfway through the first half. I'm down to one reroll as is. And this isn't really what I'm going to call an important moment. So, we'll just take the hit. We'll get him up next turn. It's, a, it's an okay it's an eight chance. Uh, gentlemen, if either of you have questions, feel free. You're the only two in the channel, as far as I can tell. Alright, as the elves, I see some possibilities of an advantage and some possibilities that aren't going to go so well. I have this war dancer who's free for the moment. And I have the ability to mark up here. I think it's time to get crazy. So first things first, we're actually going to mark up against this black which seems a little on the crazy side. But, we're going to start showing off some other possible moves that are agile teams. Specifically, the Wood Elves are very good at this. Yeah. The Wood Dancer has the ability called Leap. So, if I move, please, try that again. If I move like this, I can then leap, which is this button right here to there. Uh, let's just, okay. Right click, left click leap, right click the target. And you'll see that I have to make a die roll to get past everyone. Ooh. Uh, yes. It, uh, Marco asked the question, does the game manually change states for you? Stunt, knock down, etc. Uh, yes, it does it all automatically. You'll note that the player was stunned last turn. The smart thing would be to hit the goblin now with a two die block before doing something crazy stupid like leaping. But the leap is going to be the more challenging of the thing. So yes, the, the short version is automatically the game will change those states, which means you don't have to worry about turning people over. Uh, if you've played the uh, tabletop version before, you'll know that there's a, an issue with if you forget to turn the player over, he stays down. Uh, so I'm going to make a die roll by jumping over my own player. The die roll is basically, it's an agility roll, but because I'll be marked up at the time. So 
here we go. We jump in, and we've landed. So by doing so, I didn't have to dodge through all of these zones. And now I'm right next to the ball thrower. And because I didn't call blitz originally... Ah, uh, yes, yeah, Gorka Gorka. Uh, since I didn't call blitz originally, I can't blitz now. Which means that, that tactic that I thought was going to go so well uh, doesn't happen now. Uh, we'll beat up on this goblin right here. We'll free up the catcher in the event the ball pops loose. Uh, so you'll see here that this catcher, who has strength 2, uh, is up against a strength 3 character. And you'll see that there are two red die. Uh, two red die means you are lower in strength than your opponent, which means you will ro roll two die, and then your opponent will get to choose. So we'll just do this for the sake of interest. So I'm not going to re-roll. I'll take those. No re-roll. My opponent chooses a block dice. They can choose to get their player knocked down or pushed back. They choose pushed back. Uh, no, I don't want to follow them up. I just want to break that train a little bit. And we're going to get a few quick rolls in here. That went poorly, and now we have an elf down. Because an elf fell down, turn over. Alright. Uh, the orcs are going to do something. They're going to try to move that ball down the field as much as they can. Uh, they'll stand the goblin up just to try to keep people more into the backfield in the event that something gets turned over. First things first, free up the ball carrier. Alright, with the ball carrier down, or with the ball carrier free, we're going to run for it. So again, we're going to try to create that box with eh, maybe not a full complement of folks. And now you'll note here that there's this easy area to run, and then there's these die rules. So something that you can do is what's called go for it. Now those yellow die rolls are go for it, which means to move those extra two squares, you have to roll a die twice. Once for each extra square you want to move. You have up to two. It's called. There's a skill that it's called sprint. Allows you to take a third one. These rolls aren't hard. It's a two plus on a d6. So roll anything but a one, and you'll stay on your feet. If you roll a one, though, you fall down, and you roll against armor, and you might take an injury. So what you can do as an orc player in this situation is say, "Yeah, I'm just going to have to pray and hope that I can get people." Yep, we're going to try it. We are going to go for it. So we'll make that run. And you'll see that there will be two go for it rolls. Success. Made it. And that time rolled a five for both of them, so got really lucky. Uh, now it's time to beat on some elves. Uh, specifically the most dangerous elves first. This player right here needs to get hurt. There we go. Stunned. Everybody stays on their feet, but I have another orc right here. You can also beat on this war dancer. Unfortunately, that war dancer has dodge and is still on her bloody feet. Now, uh, since this black orc is double marked, it's a one die block, just a push. But this at least makes it harder for this elf to engage. Elven turn. Now, if only, if only, if only, this player were free, he'd be able to come all the way out and around and blitz in and maybe, maybe knock that ball loose. So, we'll bring this player who has forgotten to move for a while back. We'll stand up the players that can try to create a little bit of chaos. And then we're going to try the long run. Well, we did knock him down. 
but we freed up our player. So now we're going to go sprinting merrily along. So the elf is going to come out wide and yeesh. It's a one die, go for it, blitz. This is called a long shot. But if this doesn't work, not much is going to. Well, we marked him, but we did not, in fact, knock him down and get the ball loose. So now it's just a matter of how much marking can we successfully do because we've screwed up that workish cage. They're short players. So now the, the ball kit handler is marked with three guys, which means it's going to be very difficult for him to get free. And even if he does get free, he's going to have no cover next turn. And because we're mean like that and goblins are fun to beat up on, we beat up on the goblin yet again. This is also why, as a fragile team, you don't always stand players up if you don't have to. When the turn. So the goblin just doesn't mind getting hurt, so he'll stand up and take his hits. And the orcs are in what we're going to call a conundrum. So now we start looking at who can get there to assist with getting that ball handler free. So we're gonna call we're gonna have this blitzer. Uglet Gutlug. Gutlug. We're gonna do our blitz now because with the elf here, nobody can get through to help. And these are elves, they're small and spindly and we should be able to kill them. Well, there's one. Uh, so yes, we'll follow up. So yes, that player's still on their feet, but at least, at least, they're not marking the ball carrier. Go for two. We're not going to follow up because we want to be able to add some strength against this war dancer. Ooh, we can at least push away, and then we will follow up to try to make it harder for them to stop us. Or stop the uh, it's about to get loud uh, because you'll hear some chanting in the background because the ball carrier is close to scoring. Now I'm looking up here going, it's turn six, halftime is at turn eight, so I have two turns to score. That's a decent opportunity. But there's all these pesky elves that are just getting in the way. Oh, that's not good. Uh, we'll take it. Save the reroll. You never know when you're going to need something. Which, of course, means there are now unmarked elves who can very rapidly mark up that log here. So here they come as the elves. We've marked up the kid ball carrier once. We're actually going to blitz with the second one just to make sure that the first thing that happens is that ball carrier gets... Ooh, that's not good. And look at the player doing the blitz. He does not have the block skill, which means the ball would be loose because the orb would go down, but it would be the orcish turn. So we're going to burn the reroll, and we got it. backfield, but they have a thrower who can do something very silly and try to get it upfield. We'll try it. However, to get to the ball, they're actually going to have to make a dodge. They successfully did so because they're You'll note that they, in fact, use their sure hand skill to help pick up the ball. And now, holding onto the ball in their backfield is an option. Uh, the orcs are going to struggle to put any real pressure on them. 
but uh, let's see if they can score. So, we're going to turn around, having picked up the ball. And we will, what we call, screw up royally. Uh, you'll see here that they attempted to pass, which they rolled a one, that's a fumble. They used the pass skill, so they get to re-roll that. Uh, they still rolled a one, they fumbled, and the ball bounced free. Alright, so, the Orcs now have to try to recover possession somehow. player who's down, we're actually going to use the blitz action with them to stand up, which takes movement, and hit one of these elves that's guarding him. Success. And now we're at least marking that passer. We'll try to pick up the ball and chuck it deep. Uh, unfortunately, the orcs have now lost their best opportunity score in this half simply because they don't have the ball in their possession anymore so they are going to quickly mark up as much as they can and they'll leave the goblin doing what they can all right, Elves, which is their seventh turn, which means they have two turns to get the ball all the way down the field and into a scoring position. I'm gonna stand him up because it's gonna be important. They get a two die block on that orc. They're gonna try it. They can at least push him, which frees up that throw. And now, an agility tactic is how far down the field can you move the ball in a single turn? So you'll note that they're going to stand up this lineman. They're going to stand up this lineman. And move him over to there. And then they are going to use the ward answer before they attempt to pick up the ball to blitz this orc. They're going to roll poorly and leave everyone nicely marked up. Again, sometimes the best laid plans just fall apart on you. Next thing is, try to pick up that ball. And fail miserably. Well, the orcs get another shot at scoring, it turns out. So, with the ball down there, it's turn eight. Turn 8 means it's got to happen now or it's just never going to happen. So the orcs are going to say we can try to score, which is a long shot, or we can maybe try to hurt somebody. I think an orcish thing would be to try to hurt somebody. What do you guys say? So the first thing you have to do is actually knock the player down. That doesn't happen. We try again. Ah, there we go. Defender down. Oh, and there's someone who's hurt. So, now the elves have to make a choice. Let's see the red cross over the player. If you look down here, uh, injured, smashed him. That player now loses one permanently. As an elf, losing movement is a bad thing, so they would use their pop carry. Uh, they rolled the exact same result. So sometimes an pop carry just doesn't do you any good. Uh, so they'll leave it at the smash tip, they use the apothecary. 
get a poorly done replay, and the player is down. Uh, we'll try to create a little bit more space. And you know what? The orcs might, in fact, score here. No, they don't have the movement to do it. So, we go back to hurting people. And there's another injury. Uh, again, when a fragile team gets uh, up close and personal, just badly hurt, no longer in effect. Uh, when a smashy team gets close to a uh, not so smashy team, bad things happen. Uh, he has mighty blow, he does not. So now what we're going to do is we're going to introduce you to what's called fouling. So this poor elven catcher is lying on the ground, not actually technically doing anything bad. And you'll see that we have the movement icon and then that bloody boot icon. So by adding players around, I'm giving more opportunities to beat the armor. I'm taking a player who has mighty blow, which gives him another plus one to beat the armor, and I'm going to foul him. Now fouling, I, there will be a roll after this to see if the player gets caught by the referee. So we run up. We did, in fact, successfully knock that player unconscious. So he is KO'd. And uh, you'll note that the player stayed on the pitch. No whistles went. So uh, we're good to go. Well, the orcs are going to try something silly. They're going to try to dodge through. Did last turn, burned that reroll. Ah, but they couldn't pick up the ball. Now, the elves have uh, some challenges here. So they're going to take that cheap, cheap block. But there's really not much they can do. They've got some bad matchups, but uh, an option is just hit end turn and then receive for the second half. Another option is something crazy. Like try to pick up the ball by dodging around this orc. And, uh, well, still struggling to pick up the ball. Would have done it, but that uh, pouring rain caused some problems. So, no one has scored, and we are at the half. Now you'll hook you that die roll sound. So that knocked out player on the orc side had to make a die roll to see if they woke up. They did. The Elf have two injuries, and their player did, in fact, wake up. All right. So, the Orcs are now going to kick off. Now, they are, instead of having this thrower back in the backfield, they're going to move him up to that side. We'll bring the Goblin up to this side, and we'll say, let's do this. Let's get smashy. Now, the elves having seen that, and if you count players on the field, they're down a couple right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, they have two players badly injured. They don't have any subs. Uh, as an agile team, this just might happen in the first game or two. Uh, so, we have to have three on the line of scrimmage. But it's, uh, it's ugly here. Not gonna lie, it's, it's gonna be tough. Tough, tough, tough for the players who are, who are here. So let's see if we can just uh, maybe create some mismatches out here. And uh, we'll leave one player there. Then we're gonna drop the thrower back central. We'll leave the war dancers there. And we're going to put the catchers out over here. And you'll note I'm basically foregoing one side of the field with the intention to say, I'm going to go up my right. Now, the orcs get to kick, and they can see that the elves are going to push the elven right. So the, the, the gut instinct is to say, well, I have two options. 
I can try to kick it short and go for an onside kick. Or I can try to kick it deep into this corner and make the elves work for it. Now, their elves, making them work for it isn't really all that hard from their perspective. But an onside kick will then the ball just throw and ran out of time. So, we just kick it deep. Uh, quick snap. So, offense gets their free movement. They'll move the thrower here. And you'll note that what they're about to do is very different from what the orcs did. Instead of moving everyone into tackle range, the elves are going to get off the line of scrimmage and prevent injuries. Ah! The elves still can't pick up the ball, which is a problem. But since they now have this, <coughs> these three players out of the middle, they'll move as much as they can to create a lane. <coughs> and then force the orcs to come and meet them. Take another two die block. We'll knock the orc down. We won't follow up because we want to create that, that gap so nobody gets hurt from the elvish perspective. We'll get as deep into the backfield as possible. We'll provide an assist on picking up the ball. Really hope we get a ball pick up. And that rain is really hurting the elves right now. So, uh, <laughs> the orc player is, should be salivated right now. Because here we go, time to get smashy on some elves who are, unfortunately for them, without the ball. So you'll see that this black orc actually has the ability to run all the way through, but doesn't have the movement to get there. So they'll just start doing some nice marking. This lineman, however, has the ability to mark the ball. That blitzer has the ability to pick up the ball. So we're going to move folks in. Make sure they're not marked. We pick up the corners. We'll send the linemen. We'll actually, we'll send the uh, black orc to double up there. The thrower will just add to the weight of people about to land on that poor guy. And we'll go hit the war dancer. Meantime, we're going to go mark this war dancer out here, just to prevent any sneaky ideas the elves might have, or at least try to minimize them. And we'll do something silly, and we'll get the goblin in, get the goblin stuck in. Now, now the elves are, as we said. Gotta have they have to free up that ball. So they're just gonna try to create some overloads here. Maybe knock some of these orcs down. Stay away from the tanglements. Ah, they finally picked up the ball. You'll note that I'm actually running the ball now over the wing. And I'm stopping two squares away, not right next to him. Because now I'm going to do what's called a pass. A successful pass gets you a star player point, which is these things out here which help your players level up. We'll talk about that in the next one.
uh, a handoff when you're adjacent. You don't do because the pass is harder, obviously. So we're going to throw it to the catcher. And we will fail a throw again. This is not unusual for the elves, but sometimes, sometimes the die just didn't like you. Alright, so as the orcs, we are going to quickly mark up. As much as possible. We'll get as smashy as possible. Again, pushing the elves straight out to the sideline as much as possible. Ah, uh, well, I got knocked down, but the elves are in uh, basically as bad a position as they can be. Um, so they're actually going to leave this guy on the ground because he's not doing any good right now. They're going to try to dodge away and fail to pick up the ball. Really, the only Elven strategy at this point is try to get the ball loose, try to get players loose. It was probably a mistake to do uh, to try to pick up the ball that quickly, uh, primarily because it obviously resulted in turnover and means the Orcs are able to create man-up advantages and push folks into the stands. Before they do that, they create as many man-up advantages as they can. They mark up against the ball. And then they start in classic dwarven, or, uh, actually use a reroll there, because that's a bad way to start. Yep, another knocked out, uh, another unconscious elf. And you'll see that the numbers game is really, really starting to, to prey upon the poor Elven team. Uh, this is going to get ugly in a hurry. Oh boy. Let's uh, let's get another foul win. And he is knocked unconscious. And the ref yet again fails to spot it. Usually fouls are considered somewhat unsporting. Uh, just because you're obviously trying to hurt someone. But uh, just because it's considered unsporting doesn't mean you don't uh, you you don't have you don't get the opportunity to do it. Uh, so the elves are uh, in a bad way here. They can leave their players on the ground and submit to getting fouled, uh, or they can. Uh, Try to pick up the ball, throw it deep. You'll see it's now a 5-plus because the player is marked up rather heavily, but uh, red 3-die means you roll 3-die and the opponent picks whichever one they want from that. But uh, really, they don't have much of an option. Oh, they actually successfully picked up the ball. They've now escaped. Uh, and now we're going to try another pass, uh, and if this succeeds, then you'll see what the elf, Elven teams can do. Uh, because they're throwing past a bunch of Orcs, the Orcs get an opportunity to uh, intercept. Uh, orcs will have that guy attempt. And this is what Elves can do. They can dodge in, pick up the ball, dodge out, throw the ball forward, catch the ball. The orc failed the interception. And now the player with the ball is going to try to score. And away he goes. And right 
there, you see the real joy of having an agile team. Yeah, you suffer a lot of injuries. Yes, you are going to get beat up a lot. But even when you're in a bad situation, you can pick up the ball, chuck it, and maybe score in a real hurry. Uh, so the player who just scored earned three star player points. Uh, and you'll note that of the unconscious players, one of them stood up and one of them did not. Uh, so that player failed their uh, consciousness check. Uh, which means that they will stay down for the upcoming drop. The elves having scored now have to kick. So they are going to set up in what we will call a conservative fashion. Except that. Uh, the poor orcs will drop deep. Now as an elven player, uh, up 1-0 with only four turns left, it can be very tempting to say, kick it to the corner. The problem is when you do that, Sometimes it doesn't go where you want it to go. Alright. So the orcs are going to have to work really hard to score. There's an opening on the right. They're going to have to go for it. as much marking up as possible before oh. ah and there's another injury so uh, the elves who were left shall we say on the front line now have uh, the joys of getting beat to snot First things first, let's pick up the ball. And let's fail to pick up the ball. Well, so the elves are looking at things going, we only have to survive for three more turns. This is called a strategic withdrawal, also known as run away as fast as you can. up and run away and run away fragile catcher Ooh, uh, lucky run away and in this particular player's case uh, either direction is going to be a challenging run so we'll run away towards friendlies two goals and knocked down again you do what you can uh, the orcs are going to do what they can to mark up. Maybe even get a good blitz in. Take the hits that we can get in. Success. And you'll note that I'm being uh, a little pessimistic about where that uh, that elf might get away to. But uh, the orcs who thought they were doing pretty well 
are now down 1-0 with only three turns to score. So, the last thing we can do is try to pick up the ball. Now, their turn ended because the player who was trying to pick up the ball failed to do so. That's a fumble. However, you'll note that the Goblin got the ball. It scattered loose and the Goblin grabbed it. So, with the end of match imminent, the Elves trying to survive and betting that the Orcs can't make it downfield are going to continue operation run away as much as possible. That don't want to be on the edge of the field because then the Orcs can push in the stands. Now that particular player down there, I'm actually not even going to sit and bother moving because that's just asking for him to get hurt. Well, now, 14, 15, 16 is three turns. Let's do some math here real fast. Movement of six puts them here on turn one. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. That goblin's not going to make it on its own. Well, he's got two options. The goblin can go for it himself, or can run forward and try to hand it off, hand off the ball. In this case, I think we're probably going to wind up going for it. So, now the orcs are going to try to create line of demarcation that they don't want the elves getting past. Now basically we're going to create a line and say we're not going to let you come past this side of the field in the hopes that you won't be able to get to our rather wimpy ball carrying goblin. And they're still going to try to mark up as many of these elven players as they can just to make the elves roll to get to them. First things first, blitz, get the hits in while you can. And now, since they've got the opportunity now, they're going to go for it. And they did. So now the goblin has successfully moved forward to the point where, in the next two turns, they could theoretically score. And the elves obviously can't have it. So time to start thinking about how they can get through a gap, or create a gap. Prevent that goblin from
forced roll. Wherever possible. said that, when you've got this kind of numbers advantage against a beat-up Elven team, should be enough. Especially when we can keep pushing the Elves into the stands and letting the fans beat them up. Like that. Uh, no icon above the Elf means there's no uh, injury. up as best they can with the few players remaining to them. And then this war dancer is going to do something incredibly stupid. They're going to leap to there. And then they're going to try a disadvantage to block. So this is a blitz action. They're going to use that reroll because it's the last turn of the game. They land it. And now the the orc player gets to choose which of the two block dice they're going to, uh, are going to be used. And obviously they will choose attacker down. The elf player goes down. Now this is the, the last turn of the game, 16-16. The orc player could go for some more injuries, but really at this point, why risk die rolls when you can just score? The Orc player has come back and tied it. With a little bit of luck right there at the end. And we have a final score of 1-1. One one. League, this is worth a point to each team. A win is worth three, a draw is worth one, a loss is worth nothing. And that is a basic match of Blood Bowl. Any questions? Ah, uh, the, uh, the stats screen afterwards. I don't see any questions coming from those who are in channel. Uh, so at this point, this is having gone 20 minutes longer than I expected. I will wrap this up. Uh, thank you for those who came out. Came out. Uh, I will post this online shortly. And uh, we'll see you guys at the next one.